All right, folks, so today we're going to take a look at this battery from Red Odeo. It is a 12.8 volt battery, 100 amp hours. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, they call that LIFEPO4. This is for trolling motor and more. So, and it has the logo of the Puma or the cat or whatever it is on there. Link to their website, redodeopower.com. I'll have a link specifically to this battery below, and uh, you can check that out. And I believe at the time of this video, there are going to be some Black Friday sales because this is coming out around Thanksgiving week. If you notice up here, it says it has low temperature charging protection, uh, indicated by this logo, LTCP. And we're going to cover what that means in a few seconds. Um, what I did want to mention is, is that I was contacted by Red Audio and they asked if I would do a video review of this battery. And I love these batteries and I like doing video reviews, so I said yes. That means they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. Now, if you're the type of person who gets triggered by stuff like that, I would suggest you go watch some cat videos. All right, now that we got that out of the way, I wanted to say that we're going to cover the dimensions of this battery a little bit later on in the video, so I'm not going to do that now. And I just want to talk a little bit about the construction of the battery. It's made out of a flame retardant ABS plastic, which is nice, and it's sealed up pretty good. If I disassembled this thing, it would be a pain in the butt because it's all snapped together and glued together and all that. It has a nylon removable carrying strap, which is pretty comfortable to carry around. I believe this battery is around 28 pounds, give or take, but don't hold me to that. It comes with these two terminals here on the battery. There is your positive and there's your negative. They're color coded and marked in case you have any kind of problems. It comes with these M8 bolts with a washer and I'll just take one out so you can see it. It has a washer and a lock washer. Man, these things are, are long. You can see that there. And it also comes with these plastic caps that you put on top of this. And that helps protect your bolts. And if something was to fall on here, it might help bounce it off or something and not cause you any problems. It also came with these protective caps that you can put on here like this when the battery is not in usage to protect your terminals. So that's pretty easy and handy to do. Um, as I mentioned, here's the sticker or the logo for the low temperature cutoff protection. Let me roll in a quick clip that kind of explains what that is. One thing I wanted to cover real quick from the manual, if you take a look at here, you have temperature range and it says you can charge from zero degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius, which is 32 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a note, it says number two. So if you come down here and look at number two, the 12 volt 100 amp hour low temp battery supports low temperature charging protection LTCP where the BMS where the BMS stops battery charging when the battery temperature falls below 0 30, 30 can't read or talk 0 degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit and resumes charging when the temperature rises above 5 degrees Celsius or 41 degrees Fahrenheit so up here it says discharge you can discharge all the way down to negative four degrees fahrenheit or 140 degrees fahrenheit is the top cutoff and store this thing from 14 degrees to 122 degrees fahrenheit so that covers that okay let's take a quick look at the back of the battery and hopefully i can lay this down without causing a bunch of drama and banging everything and bouncing everything around and there we go and it comes with some icons that go across here that mean different things. C, E, and F, C, and R, O, H, S are certification standards. It says recycle this. Uh, I guess this means don't uh, throw or drop the battery. I'm not 100% sure. Don't burn it up. And don't just throw it in the trash. Here is, I guess, the parent company that makes this. I'm not going to attempt to say that because I probably won't say it right. There's an email address if you have any problems or need service. And then again, there is a link to their website. Here is the battery chemistry designation, lithium iron phosphate four. Here is some more information about the battery, but we've already covered that. And lastly, it is made in China. What I wanna do now is I wanna set this up and we're gonna do a capacity test and draw the, all of the capacity out of this and see if it meets its rated specification. Okay, so for this test, what we've done is, is that we've connected this 10 gauge wire up to the poles or the terminals on our battery. And we feel pretty good about that. The 10 gauge wire comes down and it runs into our West Mountain Radio CBA4 right here. So let's switch over to the software and I'll show you how we configure for the test. 
Okay, so here we are in the CBA software, and we're running a new test. So what I want to do is I want to come over here and hit detect. And I actually did that already. And it's showing us our voltage is 13.4. So I took this off the charger last night, I took it off as soon as it was done charging, and I let it sit overnight. And so we're going to run the test now. Now this test takes about 10 hours. Because if you look here, we have our cutoff voltage set for 10 volts. And that means the test will stop once the battery reaches an internal voltage of 10 volts. Or if the BS, BMS cutoff is higher than that, which I don't think it is. And we're going to run the test at 10 amps. So 100 amp hour battery, 10 amps an hour. It's going to take 10 hours. Over here under battery type, there's a drop down. And we want to make sure we pick LIFEPO4 for lithium iron phosphate 4. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit start and our test should begin. All right, so our test is running now, and we will come back once the test is done. All right, folks, so our discharge test is done, and these results look pretty good. What you want to see is a relatively flat line through the discharge of the battery. So here, once the battery had settled into the discharge state, we were at 12.971 volts. And then I want to go over here to where we were at the 100 amp cutoff, which is right around here. And we were 12.304 volts, which is pretty good. This dotted line that runs across the screen is our cutoff voltage at 10. So that's when our test stopped running once the battery hit 10 volts. And when that happened, we were right about here. If you look at this blue box, and I'll zoom in on that for you. You can see the test completed at 105 amp hours. Keep in mind the battery is rated at 100, so we went over by about 5%, 5.8% to be more precise. We got 1,348 watt hours, and the test ran for 635 minutes, which is 10 hours, 35 minutes, which is pretty good. All that jibber jabber that I just said, what it means is, is that this battery passed the discharge test. Now we're going to get it hooked up to an inverter and we are going to test a stronger, heavier load and we're going to see how many amps we can get out of this battery concurrently. All right, let's take a few minutes to take a look at the documentation that comes with the battery. The first thing is Red Odeo always sends a sheet of stickers and we love stickers. So thank you, Red Odeo. These are awesome. Put them over there. And then it comes with this quick start guide, which is meant to be folded and used as a booklet. There's a couple of different things. And it says, uh, notice before use with proper, proper care of your Red Odo battery, it will give you years of trouble-free power. So make sure you follow the rules. It tells you to unpack this thing and wear insulating gloves before doing the installation. It says that the battery ships with uh, 30 to 50% capacity. And you want to charge this up using a certified charger to fully charge before you operate it avoid contacting your terminals together and make sure that your wires are properly terminated and it says use electrical tape or wrap them uh, during this process and it says here ensure your battery is properly uh, wired to the load do not reverse the positive and negative that would be a bad thing talks a little bit about the supported power types and it says here do not connect batteries from different brands or different specifications in series or parallel a lot of people do this and they say, hey, man, it's okay. It worked just fine. Uh, it's not something that I want to do. So when I do put batteries in series or parallel, I always buy two of the same battery. Um, that's the best way to do it for long-term storage. It says keep between 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 95 at 50% charge, and it'll last you a long time. Don't mount it upside down. Keep it right side up. Don't put it near fire. Don't soak it in water, and don't take it apart. So this is a pretty good quick start guide. But uh, you really want to take a look at the manual and go through it. <clears throat> Here you can see the manual is for the lithium iron phosphate for low temperature cutoff protection. Let's see what we have inside here. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. So hold on. Okay, so we have some of the product overview. Uh, operating voltage is 12.8. And I think we saw that in a capacity test. Charge voltage is 14.4 plus or minus 0.2 volts. The recommended charge current is 20 amps, or they call that 0.2C. 0.2C is 20% of capacity, in this case 20 amps, because it's a 100 amp hour battery. The maximum discharge current is 100 amps, and the max continuous load power is 1,280 watts. Maximum thrust for trolling motor is 70 pounds. I have no idea what that means, sorry. 
It uses M8 terminals for the screws that mount into, or the bolts that mount into the battery. Um, both of them are the same size for positive and negative. And here's some specifications. It is 6.77 inches deep, 13 inches wide, and 8.43 uh, inches tall. Here's a little bit more information on the terminal bolts, and it comes with a set of these. It comes with a set of protective caps uh, that you put on top of those when you mount them on there, and that also helps in case something falls across the terminals. And then when the battery is not in use, it comes with these plastic things that you can uh, <clears throat> that you can use to uh, keep your terminal safe. All right, some safety information, and we're not going to go through all this, but you should you should also read the warning. And some battery parameters, things to know before use. Let's take a look and see what we have. So this has prismatic, which basically means kind of like square cube type batteries. It's not a pouch battery uh, cell configuration in there, which is nice. It gives you nominal voltage, your rated capacity at 100 amp hours. Internal resistance is less than or equal to 40 mega ohms. And you can measure this with a multimeter and check as your battery gets older, if you use it, if you overheat it or overcharge it or over discharge it, which you shouldn't be able to do because of the BMS. Your internal resistance goes up, and internal resistance in a battery is bad. That's how they die. This says it can be cycled 4,000 times. Nice. Uh, the battery BMS is uh, rated for 100 amps. Charge, mes charge method. And then uh, we have the charge voltage. We covered all this stuff. Um, here you go. Maximum discharge current for 5 seconds, 300 amps. Max continuous output power. We covered that. Here's some other stuff, and I think we've covered all of this. So let's keep going. All right, things to know before using. I think we covered most of this in the quick start guide. Recharge your battery every three months. So four times a year, you should charge and discharge this if you're leaving it in um, storage. <clears throat> Solar panels, uh, recommended power is greater than 300 watts. And it says this battery can be fully charged in one day with effective sunshine in four and a half hours by 300 watt solar panel. So that's nice to know. I think I get about seven to nine uh, amps an hour out of my 100 watt solar panel. I might be wrong about that, but I don't think I am. So if you multiply that, that gives you 20, a little bit more. That sounds about right. Here we go uh, for controller. It says uh, recommended charging current. We covered uh, 20 amps. It says right here, 50 amps. The battery will be fully charged in around two hours to 97% of capacity. When I charged this, um, I did use a 30 amp hour charger. And it says recommended charging mode, 12 volt, 14.6, LIFO, LIFEPO4. And then uh, here are some parameters for controller settings. So if you're using a, a charge controller. Here's some information about the battery charger. Uh, if you're charging it off of an alternator generator, some state of charge information and this tells you the the potential voltages that you'll get when you're charging it and then how how much it's charged up let's see what we have here here's another table that tells you uh, the copper uh, wire sizes that you should use always check your wires a lot of times you'll buy things like an inverter or solar charge control and it'll come with copper clad aluminum i would suggest that you use uh, high count stranded copper pure copper oxygen free wire and uh, when we did the discharge test, we actually used uh, 10 gauge wire right here. So it was, it was 10 and it says 35 amps over that. We discharged at 10 amps. Let's see information about connecting these things in series or parallel and some of the limitations. You should check that out. There's some more information about connecting your batteries. It's really nice of Red Odeo to con include this information so you can uh, figure out how to do all this kind of stuff. Here it says rebalance uh, every six months. So there you go, pay attention to that. And there's some troubleshooting stuff at the end for what you can do if the battery stops working. All right, that covers the instruction manual. Okay, you can see we're set up for our load test. And a couple things I wanna point out, our battery is connected to our inverter via these heavy gauge copper wires. We have a multimeter monitoring the input of the inverter, the input voltage. And you can see it's a pure sine wave inverter, 1500 watts, and we're going to push this thing to its limits. We're using a Kiwitz clamp meter to measure amperage through the cable, and then we have a Kumin watt meter to see what our output wattage is from our inverter. So here you can see with the heat gun, we are at 116 amps of draw, and we're pulling 1212, give or take, watts. 
That's when it's on its high setting. So let me go ahead and bump this down to its low setting and see what we get. And here we are drawing around 55 to 60 amps out of the battery and we are pulling 600 watts. So the battery can draw, can discharge a high current like that. Let's go back up to high and it has no problem toggling back and forth. And what this does is it shows us doubling the current output. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and grab my space heater and hook that up. Okay, here we are with the space heater, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug that into the Kumin watt meter. We also have the heat gun plugged directly into the inverter so we can increase the wattage if necessary. We set the temperature for 77 degrees. It's currently 66 in the basement. And you can see that our draw is going up and going up. So right now we're at about 50 amps of draw. Now we are at 60. And we're 65, coming on 70, and we are at 70 right now. Okay, now we're at 72, and what I like to do for fun is kick on the heat gun. And now we are pulling around 140 amps of current out of the battery. The watt meter is inaccurate because it's not including the heat gun right now. Oh, and we just tripped the inverter. Let's go ahead and reset everything. All right, we're back in business and everything's up and running. Let's go ahead and turn the space heater back on. And we're back to pulling 75 watts. Let's flip this baby on high and see what happens. We went over 200 and everything died. And the battery's fine, it's the inverter that failed. All right, folks, so we're going to give this battery a passing grade on capacity test and on load test. I want to thank Red Audio for sending me this battery for my consideration, and I want to thank everybody for watching. It's greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.